Awo Shalom Salam Tanala Tina East Aling Ine Ras Yadinos Tafari Nain. I want to speak to the brethren and the sister and and speak to my people and even others who who might listen and have been listening and checking out these videos. This is gonna be a message on moderation. Um I've been meditating this particular point for perhaps the last hour or two or so. Send some, I got some feed forward from some of the brothers and sisters and some of the relations of those who we have counseled and ministered with. And um, I begin to recognize that there's a, there's a need to, to preach and to teach and to remind our brothers and sisters about moderation about moderation and it's, it's Jesus Christos righteousness and not our own righteousness why I say that is because sometimes we can seek to self justify ourselves and it doesn't mean just us making an excuse or making an argument for ourselves or for our point of view but it can also be in how we do what we do now family is the cornerstone of the nation family now what I mean by family well there's many different interpretations of family but I mean at the very core I mean the one whom you live with the one and ones whom you uh, reside with um, whether it's your your husband your wife um, your brother in or sister in, if it's extended in laws who might not be on this particular consciousness level or might be may, might not have received what you have received in these teachings of his majesty. And um I've been meditating just how to put this soul this this message together and how to, to really communicate it and I pray that what I'm able to say in this particular reasoning can be helpful and can be instructive for many of you all. You know, there's a there's a verse in the scripture. I was telling this to a brethren that I got I had an opportunity to reason after I had a uh, a particular call with a a concerned um, brethren of his concern his sister in now this is also another another aspect that um we need more sisters um in the ministry to be able to minister to be properly first of all to be properly called you know we all have a calling i i, I just said this to a brother and that um Many may be zealous, you know, and and you know it's 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 not bad to be zealous in a good thing, but the Bible teaches us that moderation, moderation, you know, being being practical, you understand, just like the sign of practicus, and and moderation is the key, moderation in all things. In fact, there's a verse in um, Philippians chapter four, verse five that says, "Garnetachu." Let so hulu yitawak. Now the Targum or the translation Philippians four and five it says, Let your moderation be known to all men. Now there's an added part there that says the Lord is at hand. Now in the Amharic that actually comes in the in the next sentence. That's not in this particular sentence. So how the sentences are divided are a little bit different. My main point here is concerning moderation. Yes, Gita Karubna, that that the Adonai, that the Lord is near. And and he's even nearer than our own juggler vein. He is he is our life. If we accept the testimony of him in spirit and in truth, then then he is near. He's always near. You know what I'm saying? We don't look for him to so called quote come back as true Christian. We look for his revelation of himself. He says he'll be with us even to the end of the Allah. But my brothers, 
moderation is the key. You know what I'm saying? Moderation is the key. And, and I get to hear that some of my brothers and sisters are somewhat fanatical, zealous, and even a little overzealous. In a good way, but the effects or defects that it has on the, the, the balance. You know, balance is the key. In ancient Egypt, they call balance ma'at. Ma'at is the key. Balance is the key. Moderation is the key. Now, we all are on different um, soul levels. We are at different soul levels, each of us. As I said to a, a, a brethren um, earlier, that you have freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior, right? Then you have graduate school. But you also have um, K through 12, and you have pre-K, too. You have pre-K. And, and pre-K is the basic building blocks. And we intended these, these videos, the main part of the discipleship videos, and we're going to include this under discipleship as well, but the, 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 the real call and the need for moderation, as well as the real call and the need for temperance. This teaching is not for ones to trouble their household, brothers and sisters. You know, if you accept this truth and the teaching of his imperial majesty, then allow the teaching of his imperial majesty to really, to really, as they say, seep in and to really um, immerse. You, you can immerse yourself, but allow it to immerse in you. That means there's other things that are necessary in our particular situations. We, we are all in different situations. We're not even all located in the same area. You might have brothers and sisters and, and, and lovers and, and husbands or wives who are right there with you. And this is why the Bible even speaks on all these sort of issues. And I wanted to actually make this message um, particularly for the sisters. See, brothers a little, I, I think the brothers and the sisters receive truth and knowledge a little bit differently. There's a verse in scripture that says, um, it speaks about a certain kind of woman. Now, this is not to run down sisters, and please, sisters, don't think I'm trying to run the eye them down. In fact, the real point of the verse is pointing to is pointing to brothers, but it's giving a likeness here in the term of sisters. Now, where we're at right now is Second Timothy. Just when you get a chance, just read the verse and try to commit it to your memory. Try to use your memory because I'm I'm getting to hear someone just reading the Bible all day and just getting into Bible reading, and that's good. But if there's other um responsibilities that are at hand. You know what I mean? That is what is first and foremost. You know, you can't say that you are neglecting your 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 house or your household. You see this teaching is is my particular calling. And like it says, let everyone remain in the calling in which they were called. This is the calling into which I've been called. You might have a different calling. You see, we're not like in, in like some competition. You know what I mean? Um, this is my role. This is my responsibility. But it's also my role and responsibility to remind my brothers and sisters about moderation. See, family is the foundation for the nation. You see, if the family, when we talk about family, we're not just speaking about family in, in the sense of um you know, just your sibling's family, but that also counts. If you see some brothers and sisters, they, they, they've come to a certain idea of consciousness. They probably would say that they're becoming conscious, and now they become almost like Pharisees. They become so zealous, so, so zealous and fanatical about certain things. It says, though, they are learning but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. And, and 
this disturbs I and I because the first thing that your other family members, if you want to say you're unsaved or other folks out here who know you listen to these teachings of Matthew, they think, oh, this is what they teach and we're breaking up homes. We're breaking up families. Listen, if it's for the gospel's sake, the true message of the gospel, no, then it's the Holy Spirit that have done that. But if one are just troubling their house unnecessarily, you know, because they might have, um, as the scripture says, um, an unbelieving um, spouse. In other words, one who is not professing what you profess, so therefore one no longer can abide and dwell and be loving with the so-called unsaved or the one in their household that hasn't um, accepted these teachings of his majesty that I and I am the preacher or proclaimer of. That's not, you know, that's, that is not what this is about, brothers and sisters. And, and this is one reason why I have to touch on a message of moderation as well as temperance. Here, it says there's apostasy that's predicted. Our resource, of course, is the scriptures. This is why when it says to um, love the Almighty with all your mind, your body, your, your heart, to learn these words by heart. So this is one thing I used to do, and I probably need to do it again, too, because it really built up my memory. So I wasn't always, like, in the Bible, like I would probably spend a, a half hour, maybe an hour or so in the morning or maybe even traveling to work or to school, reading my Psalms. But what I was doing, I was reading the Psalms, but I was also, the prayer and the meditation was reading the Psalms and trying to commit as much to my memory. And then through the day, I'm challenging or testing myself, even though I'm doing other activities. You know what I mean? So it's not to say, well, I'm going to neglect my other activities, you know, especially if one has family, if one has youth of their household. See, people break up. People separate. And that also destroys family. And I've, I've, I've experienced that. So when I hear that a misunderstanding or misapplication of what we are teaching is also threatening to break up otherwise, according to the scripture, good relationships. It, it, it's almost like I was saying, and I, I got I to gotta, I gotta talk about this, we, we, we need to keep it real if we're grown folks. You know, there's some people who... Um, think that like because of the Rasta and the reggae music, you know, like certain type of man, woman, you know, consenting man, consenting woman, nobody going out their way to fornicate or adulterize, but they're, they're basically a, 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 a couple, a male and a female. You understand? What a male and a female does consenting-wise in their own um bedroom and in their own house, no reggae song or DJ or little kind of um, gimmick gimmickry should affect that. Now, I'm not going to go into, you know, um, you know, like, because there's nothing in the Bible that says what's permitted and what's not permitted between a consenting male and female, as long as it's not abuse as long as it's not some 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 really sadistic or masochistic sort of practices. But, um, you know, I'm not going to say where a man can kiss his woman or where a woman can kiss her man. That is yours. This is what the Bible teach. And, and I think that some folks have a... Uh, our immature and uh, unlearned understanding, and this this does happen. A lot of us, when we first really begin to uh, 
get conscious or get a sense of consciousness, we, we often go to the extreme. I think going to the extremes, in a sense, is a part of the learning process. But I'm saying, brothers and sisters, be careful. Because the Bible is telling us, let your moderation be known to all men. Now, a translation of uh, Philippians um, 4 and 5 would actually state that moderation, the garnet, the garnetachu, is your tameness, your gar, tegera, your, your, your tameness. You know, uh, when we say tame, it's like, you know, you have a wild animal and you have a, 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 a tamed animal, like, you know, you don't bring a wild animal into your house, but you bring a domesticated animal. That means that, that's, that that animal knows how to live around people. And the same thing with I and I, brothers and sisters, you know. Um, and I'm concerned for my brothers and sisters, seeing that we don't have the sort of fellowship where it's even direct fellowship, but we put out this message once listen to it, take notes, study up on things. But please, brothers and sisters, keep a balance. It's, it's like, for example, let's talk, about, let's talk about this because we're touching on some points and we might go into some of these points in further detail. But this is, this is a call to Rastafari for moderation as well as for temperance. And, and this is not in what we've heard in a reggae song or what we might have heard as some gossip on the street, but according to a digested comprehension of the word. This is why we're learning that even in the early church, there were kind of stations or categories, but stations, there were, they were, they were steps, let's call it like that. Like there's one called the catechumen. Now, catechumen... Uh, often gets a bad name in some circles, you understand, because a catechumen is like a, a candidate. A catechumen is like a newcomer. A catechumen is someone who is still, who is still learning, you understand. And see, in the early church, the catechumen could not come into the mysteries. The catechumen, there was a service, part of the service, in, 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 the, in the holy place, in the Kedase or the Ecclesia or the church, was for the catechumen. In other words, those newcomers, those novices. Remember what the word says. It says that there are ones who are qualified to be a bishop, but one of the categories was that not a novice. And we ask ourselves, well, why not a novice? What is wrong with a novice. And the word tells us right here, it says, not a novice, least being lifted up with pride. You know, which we can call it false pride, but lifted up with pride, what does it say? He fall, he or she fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now that condemnation of the devil, condemning of the devil, that's enough to drive you crazy, you see? And we wonder why some folks go crazy because of lack of moderation, brothers and sisters. And see, I'm giving this message without going into, you know, any personal people's story, you know, because the Holy Spirit has guided us that we can digest the basic essence of it without having to embarrass unduly any brother or sister or to expose any confidence that has been given to I and I. But the recent reasoning that I, I, I got into, it brought to mind this particular scripture right here in Second Timothy. And Second Timothy talks about the apostasy, the falling away that was predicted and how we as faithful and true, you see, faithful and true, means we're not doing what we want to do, but we're doing his will. And, and his will requires that we balance, that we live in balance. See, keeping the Sabbath is not just having a day off or a day to pretend or act holy, but 
the Sabbath is at the end of a work week. I mean, six days shall you work. And th there's some brothers that have had to say, listen, you know why y'all can't keep the Sabbath the way it should be or, or, or to remember the Sabbath and, and keep it set apart? Because other days you, you, you're not in any discipline, any organized, any productive, quote, works. No occupational labor. It's like you're taking the Sabbath all week, and then the Sabbath comes in, and, and, and you're really doubly bored. Now you think that this is some sort of almost pharisaical, okay, i got to keep the Sabbath, and you don't really understand. And if you do understand, are you applying what you understand? That's why Christ says it's not just the hearers, but it's those who do. You see, and there's been some... Um, misunderstanding about what we teach based on what some of y'all have, based on the your love and praise of what we're doing, but then your misrepresentation of the good news of the King of Kings by your lack of discipline, by your lack of moderation. So the so-called unsaved folk out there, those who are not like I and I, they think based on your misapplication of these teachings, they think that this is this is what line of Judah this is what the line of Judah teaches. This is what what um Rasayadanis uh Wendem Yadin teaches. And nothing could be further from the truth. And this is one of the reasons why we speak on this because it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, more than lovers of Jah, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Let's pause there because many will say, oh, you got the form of godliness, but do we deny the power? The power is the word. The power is the truth. The power is this right here, speaking about a real message in the real time and as real as we can without trying to unduly offend anyone, brothers and sisters. You see, we might be able to do two or three lectures a day, but you might only be able to focus on one lecture or part of one lecture. You see, if one is interested in getting um, backups of any of these lectures, you know, go to our website, hit us up on the contact page, and say, I'm very interested in this series, that series, let me know when it's prepared, you know, or can you prepare a series from some of the videos? Is there any more to that, Ken? You know, what will it take to get a D 